Hello and thank you for watching my video. My name is Astrid Krasnici. I'm CCNA and CCMP certified instructor. On this video, we are covering CCNA semester two, routine and switching essentials. This is chapter seven, routine dynamically. Chapter seven is divided in five sections. We have section 7.1, dynamic routing protocol. Then section 7.2, distance vector dynamic routing. Then we move on to section 7.3, RIP and RIP and G routing. Section 7.4 talks about link state dynamic routing and 7.5 the routing table. Quite a big chapter. Section 7.1 dynamic routing protocol. Upon completion of this section, you should be able to explain the basic operation of dynamic routing protocols, compare and contrast dynamic and static routing, determine which networks are available during the initial network discovery phase, and define the different categories of routing protocols. The evolution of dynamic routing protocols. There has been a dynamic routing protocol since late 1980s. The newer versions support communication based on IPv6. There's two types of routing protocols. There's interior gateway protocols, they use them inside our company, and there's exterior gateway protocols when there's communication between a company with a company, two different companies. So in interior gateway protocols, all these protocols are within our company. We can choose Two, two choices we have here for interior gateway protocol. We have distance vector and link state. So if I mark them here, so we have a, a distance vector protocol and link state protocols. Interior gateway protocols, just to remind you again, these are within our company. So within our company, we will use interior gateway protocols. If we would like to talk to another company, then we will use exterior gateway protocols, gateway protocols. So distance vector protocols which we, and link state protocol, we're gonna talk a more in depth later on, but there's distance vector protocols that RIP version two, this is for IPv4, and EIGRP. These are the distance vector protocols. For version six, we have RIP NG on next generation, and EIGRP for IPv6. These are the distance vector. Link state routing protocol, we have two as well, two choices. For version 4, IPv4, we have OSPF version 2 and ISIS. For version 6, we have OSPF v3 and ISIS for IPv6. OSPF v3 does support both. It does support IPv6 and it does support IPv4. Purpose of dynamic routing protocols. Routing protocols are used to facilitate the exchange of routing information between routers. These are the purpose of routing protocols. Discovery of remote networks. Like for example, directly connected networks, you don't need, the router doesn't need to discover them because it already knows. As soon as you enable the interface, it discovers them that way. But somehow you need to discover the remote networks, the networks that are connected to different routers. For example, uh, we had early in, in the previous chapter, chapter six, we talked about static. You can tell the router statically how to get the remote networks, but that's not scalable for large networks. It does, we do maintain all the routers or routing protocols, they maintain up-to-date routing information. So if one path fails, they will pick another path, or if there is a new path, they will tell the neighbors, so they will maintain up-to-date routing information. And then, for example, one, one router gets to get to the destination, say destination B, to get to destination B, he can hear from many sources, many neighbors, through two or three neighbors or four neighbors or more, and then, the routing protocols have, have the ability to choose the best path out of these. So if they tell, if the same information get a, it's getting from four neighbors, it will pick the best path to get to the destination. And the ability to find a new best path if the current path is no longer available. So say to destination B, I'm, re, I'm getting four paths, four neighbors are telling me how to get there. I'll choose the best one. And then if the best one fails, then I have the ability to find a new best path if the, one, the current one fails. Main components of dynamic routing in protocols include data structure. Routing protocols typically use tables or database for its operations. This information is kept in RAM. So for example, the first, first let's look at the EIGRP for example. EIGRP keeps a neighbor table. So once we like start communicating in EIGRP, EIGRP will start discovering the neighbors who's my neighbor using some some kind of messages there which we're going to talk very soon 
Then, after we discover our neighbors, then we start learning all, all different destinations or remote destinations from the neighbors. So say my neighbors are telling me quite a few remote destinations, all these destinations, I keep them in topology table. And then, from that topology table, I pick the best path to the destination and I will put that under my routing table. So these are some kind of like uh, data structures that routing table they keep, routing protocols they keep, like for example, different kind of tables. To build these tables, routing protocol they discover, they, they exchange messages with each other, for example, with the neighboring routers, exchange routing information and other tasks to learn and maintain accurate information about the networks. For example, EIGRP uses uh, five kind of messages, uses, which we're going to talk anymore in C CCNA semester three. There's two chapters dedicated to EIGRP. Some, ki some kind of messages that we have, for example, is hello message, okay? That's how we discover our neighbors by exchanging our hellos. Once we met our neighbor, then we exchange an update. I'll tell my neighbor, okay, well, I know how to get to destination A, B, C. The neighbor tells me how do they get to destination X, Y, Z, for example. So that's where we update our neighbors. And then we can query the neighbors. So say, for example, here we can query the neighbors. Say that I lost the path to get to destination X. Then I'll ask the neighbor, say, okay, well, I lost that path. Maybe you have another path how to get there. Then the neighbor can reply, we'll say yes or no, I don't. And we have acknowledgement. So for example, these three messages here, they do get acknowledged, right? The update, query, and reply, they will get acknowledged. So these are kind of routing protocol messages. Each routing protocol has a different kind of messages, which you're gonna be learning. And then each routing protocol has a different algorithms as well. So they run the algorithm after the exchange of the, all the destinations, exchange of routing messages, then they will try to build a routing table. So for example, they will pick the best path to the destination and it will add it to the routing table. They do that by running the algorithm. For example, the EIGRP has a dual algorithm. So the role of dynamic routing protocols, dynamic routing protocols, they have their own advantages and disadvantages. For example, advantage of dynamic routing protocol is suitable in all topologies where multiple routers are required. Generally independent of the network size, it can be a medium, large network, or you can even run dynamic routing in a small networks. Automatically adopts topology to reroute traffic if, po if possible. For example, if the primary path fails, automatically we'll find out, okay, well, let's find another path to get to the destination. The disadvantages, can be more complex to implement so it can be more complex than the static routing well depending on the on the network or scalability of the network but once you implement it once everything is working correctly you can leave it to do its job it's less secure so dynamic routing protocols they, they exchange messages oh this is what i know you tell me what you know and so on so that's that's considered a security risk but we can configure some additional security settings to make it secure Route depends on the current topology. So for example, in with the static routing, we do the path how it gets to the destination. But if if the router loses the, the, the path to the destination, it might not learn another way to get to that destination. So it will depend on the current topology. And it, the routing protocol, they do require additional CPU, RAM, and link bandwidth. So when you think of a static routing, pretty much didn't need any CPU or RAM because you told it what to do. These are the advantages and disadvantages, so you don't forget about the static routing. Static routing is easy to implement in a small network. It's very secure because static routing, they don't advertise or not sent compared to the dynamic routing, so they don't tell the destination how they learn in and how did they get to the destination. And route to destination is always the same, so, and we know because we have configured it, okay? So if you want to go from A to Z, you take this path, and that's the always going to be the path the router chooses. And another advantage for this is that no routing algorithm are used or, me or update mechanism required. Therefore, extra resources, CPU and RAM are not required. The disadvantages is suitable only for a small topology or simple topologies or for a special purpose such as default static route. Configuration complexity increases dramatically as network grows and manual interven intervention requires to reroute the traffic. So if the path goes to, des if destination goes down, if, if a remote network can 
goes down, shuts down, or whatever, then you have to go to each router and update that static route. Dynamic routing protocols operation. In general, the operation of dynamic routing protocol can be described as follows. The router will send and receive routing updates on its interfaces. So the neighbors that will exchange what destination do they know, how to how, what's the cost to get to that destination and so on. So they will send and receive these routing messages. For example, if you remember from previous slide, the routing messages were hello, they will update, a query, a reply, an acknowledgement, different routing protocol, they have a different route messages. Number two is the router shares routing messages and routing information with other routers that are using the same routing protocols. So there's no point if you have one router who's talking EIGRP, another router is talking OSPF. They're not gonna, even though they can send and receive routing messages, but they're not gonna understand them. So they have, number two, they have to speak the same protocol, same language. Number three, routers exchange routing information to learn about remote networks. So the only re reason why you're talking to other routers and exchanging these messages is because you want to learn about the remote networks. When a router detects a topology change, the routing protocol can advertise this change to other routers. So for example, when, when the network is shut down or there's a failure or something, then they will advertise to each other saying, okay, well, this network has gone down and they have to update their routing table. Here is an operation, routing protocol operation fundamentals is a cold start, directly connected network detected. Okay, so now we're gonna see what happens uh, from from the time you, you start the router. Okay, so this is the cold start, directly connected networks are detected. So if I run the play, and as soon as we enable like interface, given IP address and so on, uh, that will be added to the routing table. For example, router, let me just stop this video for a second here. Okay, so now what, what we can see with the router one is as soon as we enabled, for example, fast ethernet by doing well, first given IP address 101 for example, and then the subnet mask and no shutdown, the router has taken that network and it's added on the routing table. Said, okay, well, I know about network uh, 10100 and it's directly connected me with my fast ethernet 00 and hop zero because it's directly connected with me. And then we enabled serial interface. We give an IP, that IP address uh, on that network and then the router says, okay, well, I'm gonna add that on my routing table as well, and zero hops. Same thing will happen for the router two. So router two, as soon as you enable this side, S00, 10.3, it's in S001, and router three does the same thing for S001, 10.3.0.0, and 10.4.0.0 in fast ethernet, okay. So right now, the network is not converged. All they know is about directly connected networks. So router one, for example, knows how to talk to this network, it's directly connected, and it's how to talk to this network, it's directly connected. But router one has got no way of sending information to network shared between router two and three, the serial, and then the fast ethernet network or ethernet network on router three. So we'll see the next step, what happens, net network discovery. So if I play, so what's gonna, do, what's gonna happen here? Router one is gonna advertise the networks to router two. Now this network here, there is not gonna advertise it. So they're not gonna send the network is directly connected between them. Router one will send this network and it will send it towards there, right? And router two will take this network here, 10.3.0 and will send it towards router one. Same for router three, will advertise the network that is connected 10.4.0 to router two. Okay, let's see it. Okay, so 10100, this network is going this way, and the other network is going on the other side, right? Same thing for router 2. So you're only advertising the other side, you're not advertising the directly connected network. And 1030 is going on this side on the fast ethernet, and fast ethernet 00 is going on this side here. Okay, so I want you to understand that like 10100 is going to go on this packet here. So the far away network, not the directly connected network. Directly connected network is gonna go this side. Okay, so if I continue, they can exchange, right? So now there's an update came in from router two about 10.3.0.0. Okay, so the router one is gonna add that on the routing table. Say, okay, well, I just go and update, uh, let me just 
stop it here okay so I got 10 3 0 0 from root 2 they came in as s 0 0 0 and it's because their net hop is 0 hop count is 0 I'm just gonna add one hop okay good now root 2 is gonna do the same it's gonna say okay well I just got 10 1 0 from root 1 let me add that on routing table and the interface they came in on was s 0 0 0 and it's one hop away so the same will be for 10 4 0 0 one hop away but this came on s 0 0 on this interface this side and root of 4 oh sorry root of 3 will do the same thing 10 2 0 0 this network just came in on this interface and it's one hop away because it was directly connected for the router so the router they don't increase the hops as they as they send them the one that is receiving the, the network it will increase the hop okay so now let's let's move on to the next one so at the moment router 2 knows how to get to every network but the network is still not converged because router 1 knows how to get to network 10300 which this network they're sharing but it still doesn't know about how to get to this network 10400 so that's going to be on the next exchange on next update same thing 10100 is going to root 2 and 1020 this network is going towards fast ethernet you should make this as a passive interface because there's no point in sending there anything there passive interface means that no updates should be going on that towards that interface they're going to exchange the whole thing again and as you can see now I, I don't know if you yeah you can pause it and go back and have a look but this network the fast ethernet 00, zero is coming this way and those two networks they've been there learned on s00 zero zero, they're going this way and again these networks they, they will learn in s00 zero zero, s00 zero zero, they will go this way and everything that's coming on s001 zero zero so this side is going to go this way okay so there's no new information on router 2 so router 2 is just going to ignore but router 1 has got new information about the network down here 10400 zero, zero, and it's two hops away this time okay now the network is converged achieving convergence the network is converged when all routers have complete and accurate information about the entire network convergent time is the time it takes the router to share information calculates the best time best path and update the routing tables a network is not completely operable until the network has converged convergent properties includes the speed of propagation of routing information and the calculation of optimal paths. The speed of propagation refer refers to the amount of time it takes for the router within the network to forward routing information. Generally, older protocols such as RIP are slow to converge, where modern, modern protocols like EIGRP and OSPFR converge more quickly. Um, I want you to pay attention to this uh, comment here. This is a big, big thing, because they're gonna ask you again and again, what is a conversion? The network is converged when all routers have complete and accurate information about the entire network. So if I ask you, for example, what is convergence, then you would say convergence is when the routers have complete routers, all routers have complete and accurate information about the entire network. Cool. Classifying routing protocols. So we have a dynamic routing protocols or static, the other one, but we are learning dynamic routing protocols. There are dynamic routing protocols we have is interior gateway protocols, IGPs, and exterior gateway protocols, EGPs. IGPs is within our company or within our autonomous system. Uh, now, e EIGP is between two ASs, two different autonomous systems. For example, say two ISPs like BT talking to another ISP, Sky, they're going to use E exterior gateway protocols. Interior gateway protocols are classified in two different protocols, two type, two diff, two protocol types. There's a distance vector routing protocol, distance vector routing protocol, and link state routing protocol. They both have the advantages and disadvantages. Exterior gateway protocol has only one, which is path vector routing protocol. Now, distance vector protocol, we have two types. We have a classful and classless. Classful when you has a, a three different class classful boundaries like class A, 
forward slash a class b forward slash 16 class c forward slash 24 for example so class full we have rip version 1 legacy protocol and igrp not even supported so legacy is not even supported in most of the routers right now then we have a class less routing protocol which is rip version 2 that's enhanced version of rip version 1 and eigrp which is enhanced version of igrp exterior enhanced interior gateway routing protocol stands eigrp stands for and routing information protocol for rip rip version 1 and igrp are legacy protocol they have evolved into the class less routing protocol rip version 2 and eigrp then we have a class less uh, sorry link state routing protocol there's no class full at all so we just straight go to class less and we have only two of them ospf and isis and then we have a path vector uh, link state routing protocols are class less by nature then we have a uh, exterior gateway protocols and you're, you're lucky to know there's only one of them and uh, you will be learning a lot more about this protocol on bg on ccmp which is bgp border gateway protocol so interior gateway protocols and exterior gateway protocol so interior gateway protocols or igp for short are used by organizations and within service provider network for example this organization they, they are known with autonomous system numbers so this is not free so you have to go and purchase your as so each company like bt and usually the isps they will have or even large companies they have them as numbers so they purchase them they're not free like the IP addresses so they have AS1 AS2 and AS3 I think these are just examples yeah and within within the AS or within the company we can have interior gateway protocols like EIGRP OSPF ISIS and so on now together with ISP as well they can have their own interior gateway protocols and within between the two different companies or between two AS's then we run exterior gateway protocols like EGP and there's only one which is B BGP used for routing between AS's official routing protocol used by the internet yeah internet right now it's used running on BGP now some companies for example large companies they don't need if they have only one connection right single homed towards one ISP they don't really need to run BGP they can just have a default static routing it says anything anything I'm going to go towards the my ISP and ISP will create a, a static route as well uh, towards the company a large company that has two con for example a multi-homed to two different isps that that's the vulnerability to run a bgp routing protocol okay distance vector routing protocol distance vector routing protocols routes are advertised as vectors of distance and direction so how far is it and what direction so distance is defined in terms of metric such as hop count direction is simply the next hop router or exit interface typically use the bellman ford algorithm for the best path shortest route determination distance vector routing protocol so we have four distance vector routing protocols well two and two are enhanced rip version one this is a uh, legacy protocol like old-fashioned then we have an enhanced version of rip version one which is rip version two simple distance vector routing protocol igrp its first generation of cisco pro proprietary protocol now it's obsolete i told you not many routers they even run this anymore and then we have eigrp this is advanced distance vector routing protocol for example the distance vector routing protocol they worry about distance how far and what direction for example for r1 here 172.16.3.0 which is the internet work here is one hop away one hop to the next router and it can be reached through router 2 that's a vector so distance is one hop and vector is towards router 2 or could be my exit interface s000 distance vector routing protocols use a router as signposts along the path to the final destination a link state routing protocols is like having a complete map of the network topology the signposts along the way from source to destination are not necessary because all link states routers are using an identical map of the network a link state routing uses the link state information to create a topology map and to select the best path to all destination network in topology okay so the difference is link state routing protocol they build this map 
They build a topology map. They know every destination, every path there is within the area. And then you will go, before you go to the destination, before you start going, right, if, if you look at the map, you find the best path and the shortest route to get to the destination. You can take into account, okay, well, is there is there a problem or what's the bandwidth, better bandwidth, for example, to get to the destination. Rather than distance vector routing protocol, more like, a, okay, fine, let's go to the destination without thinking. It's just like, well, there's got to be a signs in there, in, in the way towards the destination. So we just look at the signs. But the problem with that is that if you just look at the signs, you, there could be a loop, for example. Somebody could turn around the sign and you're just going around and around in circles. Distance vector protocols, they don't have that problem. They don't have the loop. They don't have the loop because they all have the A to Z, which is identical, and they look at the A to Z before they actually go to the destination. The A to Z, that's a topology map. Well, I don't know, A to Z is like a, a map in, in England about every road. For example, in London, <coughs> sorry, about London, the whole roads are marked in A to Z book. Link state routing protocols. So these are uh, two protocols only, OSPF and ISIS. Popular OSPF is popular standard based on routing protocol. This is the protocol that you're going to be learning mainly on the CCNA2 uh, and CCNA3. CCNA2, next chapter. CCNA3, there's two chapters dedicated to this protocol. ISIS is pro popular in uh, ISPs, right? They use ISPs very similar to OSPF. So once you understand the OSPF, you will understand the ISIS. But the ISIS we don't cover on the CCNA topics. So classful routing protocols. Classful routing protocols do not send a subnet mask information in their routing updates. So no subnet mask. Only RIF version 1 and IGRP are classful. It's created when networks are allocated based on class classes, class A, B, or C. This cannot provide VLSM, variable length subnet mask, or classless into the main routing. So it does create a problem in discontiguous networks. And classless routing protocol, these are that we use. We don't use class uh, classful anymore. We all classless. We have e RIP version, all of them, e RIP version 2, EIGRP, OSPF, and ICS. They do support VLSM and CIDR, IPv6 routing protocols. So routing protocols characteristics when you think of speed of convergence. Do you remember what was convergence? If not, go back on the video and have a look. Speed of convergence is, well, RIV version 1 and version 2 and IGRP are very slow. Now, EIGRP, fast, converges very fast, and OSPF and ISIS, they do converge very fast. Scalability, now, these three protocols, they're pretty much the same. RIV, small, 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 very small networks. Here we can have any size of the networks, usually large, but any size. Use of VLSM, no, it's not supported in RIV version 1 and IGRP, but it is supported on, on uh, RIV version 2, EIGRP, OSPF, and ISIS. It is supported. Resources, the resource usage is very low on all three first protocols. RIV version 1, version 2, IGRP, very, very low. RIV version 2, for example, can run in very, very little resources. EIGRP medium, right? It's a good, it's advanced protocol, but see, it does need a medium resources. Now, when you think about OSPF and ISIS, because they have to maintain that, like a, like A to Z, that like a map of the whole network, they're gonna use a lot of resources. And implementation and maintenance is very simple on all the first three protocols. And all last three, EIGRP, these are advanced protocols. So maintenance and implementation is gonna be complex. Routing protocol metrics. A metrics is a measurable value that is assigned by the routing protocol to different routes based on the usefulness of that route. Used to determine the overall cost of the path from the source to destination. Routing protocol determine the best path based on the route with the lowest cost. So for example, a RIP uses a metric as a hop count. This is a simple metric that counts the number of routers a packet can traverse. So for example, let me just try and draw it here, yeah? So I've got it like this. I've got three routers, uh, A, uh, like this. This is router one, for example. This is router two, and this is router three. So for example, this is 64, yeah? Modem speed, 
64 kilobits per second and this one is t1 for example and this one is t1 this is like a broadband speed here yeah? now destination imagine the destination is here yeah from router one that's the destination i'll put d small d there now if you talk to rip rip will look at say okay well i don't really care the bandwidth because it doesn't take into account any bandwidth it just looks to the hops so if i go from one to three directly that's better than going to one to two and then two to three but this is a it's a modern speed it's very very slow but as far as rip is concerned it looks at the hop count and it says okay well psh, uh, fine this is less hops now eigrp before i go to eigrp let me talk about ospf ospf will look and say okay well i don't care about the, ho the hops how many hops i need to, to cross to get to the destination all i need to look at is the bandwidth right so bandwidth which way is better should i go to modern speed or should i go broadband speed well yeah i will choose the broadband speed so this way is better to get to the destination that's ospf look at the cost and cost is derived from the bandwidth cumulative cost so it adds the cost t1 plus t1 to get the destination eigrp looks at it bandwidth and delay so bandwidth influences path selection by preferring the path with the low highest overall bandwidth so we'll look at it says okay the bandwidth is going to look eigrp is going to look at the bandwidth from source to destination and it's going to pick the lowest bandwidth as that's going to be my target that's what i'm going to use as my bandwidth and delay consider the time the packet traverse takes to traverse a path now eigrp look at the uh, optionally we can look at load and reliability okay so if i if imagine this if you're driving if you if you're going to i don't know from london to birmingham this is a b road yeah so this is very slow and this is a motorway so you this way is going to take the motorway to get to the destination now in motorway say imagine that you have to stop a few times and a b road you don't have to stop you can just go but it's very slow yeah so rip looks and says okay well i'm not going to take motorway because i need to stop so i'll take the b road non-stop okay even though it gets three hours later it doesn't really care just non-stop is more important and the uh, ospf says okay well no b road because it's very slow i look at the bandwidth so i look at like motorways it's got four lanes i'll go with the motorway yeah eigrp is a bit more advanced says okay well i can take the b road or the motorway i really prefer the motorway than the b road because it's faster but let me check if the motorway is busy maybe there's there's an accident there or something and there's there's a big congestion everybody's going there I might be arriving to the destination taking the B road better, quicker than taking the motorway. So that's that's it because the EIGRP is a bit more advanced. So you can look at these as well. The load is how busy is it is the and reliability, how reliable is that uh, link. Okay, thank you very much for watching. Uh, section 7.1 dynamic routing protocol. Please have a look at my other videos and don't forget to subscribe. This has been Astrid Krasnichi. Next video, 7.2, distance vector dynamic routing. Bye-bye.